everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'm here to tell you about all the books that I read in January. January has been an excellent reading month for me, such that I am definitely a member of the Avid Readers Club. This may have been partially due to stress and trying to escape reality, but you know what? I think that's a feeling we can all understand here on booktube, especially right now. So the first book I read in January was Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. My dear friend Amanda sent me the entirety of this series for both my birthday and Christmas, so I thought I would definitely start by reading the first one. Plus, I'm hoping that this will bring a little romance into my own life this year. I don't know, but it can't hurt. This is a series about a group of suffragette women in the 1870s, I think, in London and in Oxford, who are trying to win better lives for themselves. They're trying to advocate for amendments to the Married Women's Property Act, and Annabelle is also trying to pursue an Oxford education for herself but her family is not supportive and she's barely making a living. However, she then meets the Duke of Montgomery, who is a member of Parliament, and sparks fly and romance begins to happen. I really enjoyed this series. It was just the perfect gripping escape that I needed at the beginning of the month. Is it the most literary of books? Of course not, but it was immersive and just a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed reading it and I can't wait to see where the series goes as we then cover the other three women in Annabelle's group of friends and their romances. Next I read The Harmonious Blacksmith by Susanna Newstead, I believe? It's been a while everyone, please forgive me. This was actually book three in a series, which I didn't discover until I was granted the arc, but it turned out not to matter. It worked very well as a standalone. This is a book that was marketed to be almost a dual timeline narrative, where it takes place in the same country village in England, but half of it takes place in the medieval era and half of it takes place in the modern era with parallel characters. That's not entirely true. It mainly takes place in the medieval era, and the epilogue takes place in the modern era with parallel characters. And I'm struggling to tell you about the plot without giving away major plot points. It's mainly about the village blacksmith, who is also a very talented singer, and his quest for love and how that tends to go horribly wrong for him. And how it turns out that it's not just him who is affected by this problem. I found it very gripping and very engaging, but it was very off-putting that I could never quite pin down what this book was trying to do or where it was trying to go. So I would recommend it, but I would go in with a completely open mind and not pinning your hopes on the summary itself. Next, I read Barry Squire's Full Tilt by Heather Smith. And this is a book about Barry Squires, who is a teenager in Newfoundland? Yes, Newfoundland in Canada in 1995 or so. And Barry has a lot of anger. His family life isn't exactly what he would want it to be. He is just angry at the world at large. But he discovers Father O'Flaherty and the Full Tilt Irish Dancing Troupe, and it becomes his goal to become a member. Because he's watched Riverdance twice, so clearly he knows what he's doing. Things go on from there. I will say this is very funny. It will also rip your heart to shreds. You want to throttle Barry at various points, especially teaching high school. I 
wanted to both hug him and slap him upside the head, which is fairly normal for dealing with teens in my experience. So in that way, it was very well written. Honestly, I wanted more Irish dancing content. I really wanted more Irish dancing content as I, wa as I am a former Irish dancer. That's what I went into this book looking for, and it wasn't quite there. But it is nonetheless a wonderful book and well worth a read. Next, Marissa of Blatantly Bookish and I are hoping to buddy read the Blanding's Castle series. So in order to catch up with her, I read Something Fresh, which is the first in the Blanding's Castle series, which is here in this bind up that my mother has. And the series is written by P.G. Woodhouse, who is perhaps most famous for the Jeeves and Worcester series, but Blanding's is another of his famous series. And the series in general follows the Earl of Emsworth, or is he a duke? I can't remember, but Lord Emsworth, who is not really interested in running his estate. He's very absent-minded, doesn't really know what's going on most of the time. He really just cares about raising his prize pig and making sure his son doesn't get into too much trouble in London, which he inevitably always is. He is always going to clubs and drinking and picking up the wrong sort of women, and they always get into terrible scrapes. This book I found rather disconcerting in that it didn't really follow those characters. They were introduced through this book and they became sort of secondary characters but mainly we were following two young writers who were invited to Blanding's Castle by other characters who were also going to Blanding's Castle. And these two writers get mixed up in the events of the theft of an ancient Egyptian scarab. And as usual in P.G. Woodhouse, there are always people looking to escape engagements. It was very sweet, it was very cute, but I wanted more of your standard Blanding's Castle characters, so I'm hoping that they will show up more in the future books in the series. Then for my non-fiction pick for the month, I read Londonopolis by Martin Latham, which is, as it says, a curious history of London. And he goes in chronological order by era. So beginning with the does he start with the ancients or does he start with the Romans? I stand corrected. He starts with the Neanderthals, then into the Romans, then into the Norman conquest, and so on and so forth. This was just okay for me. Sometimes he would bring up really interesting points and I was really intrigued by them, but at other points it got really dry and very boring. Or there wasn't just enough detail as I was looking for. Also, I can't remember specific examples, but I feel like he got a little bit politically incorrect in portions, which could be a product of his age as he is an older white man, but it still made me vaguely uncomfortable. So it was fun. I'm glad I read it. I did learn one or two things, but I will be passing this along to perhaps my parents who enjoy travel writing, or if not, I will be donating it to a library book sale. Next is, I believe, my first five-star read of 2021, and that was Hana Khan Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. I loved Aisha at Last by Uzma Jalaluddin, which is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, and I thought she did a wonderful job. So I was really, really excited to read this one, and I read it straight through in about two days. It's about Hana Khan, who wants to start her own podcast, have her own spot on Toronto radio, but she's really struggling to get there. The cards seem to be stacked against her. And her parents' restaurant is failing, her sister isn't doing very well. And then in sweeps this big shot restaurateur businessman who is about her age, who is looking like he wants to put the family restaurant out of business. And she is of course furious Meanwhile, she's carrying on this secret conversation 
with one of her podcast listeners, and he seems to get her through quite a lot. And I can't tell you more than that because that will spoil things. This is one of those books where you can see where it's going. You know how it's going to end, but you are desperate to know how they're going to get there. And that's how it keeps you hooked. I loved so many of the things that it explores. It explores gender, it explores Islamophobia and xenophobia, both in large ways and in tiny ways by well-intentioned people. And you are so frustrated on their behalf, and yet they get to be incredibly flawed people who have the most beautiful romance and meeting of minds, and oh, it's just perfect. I loved it so much. Go read it. Then I moved on to Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce, which is the story of Emmy Lake, who is desperate to become a news journalist, a war correspondent, and so she gets this job at a newspaper and she is so thrilled, but she soon discovers that it is in fact the job as the secretary to Dear Mrs. Bird's advice column in a women's magazine that no one really reads anymore. And she's of course very disappointed, very frustrated, and Mrs. Bird is a very hard-lined woman, and she refuses to answer a lot of the letters that women are sending in because they are inappropriate. And Emmy starts to feel really badly for these women, so she begins writing back to them in secret as Mrs. Bird. And the story develops from there. I found this really funny in places, really moving in places. I felt like it wrapped up a bit too quickly for me. But apart from that, I really enjoyed it, and I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel. Then I read another arc that I was granted, and that was Reputation by Lex Croucher. Lex Croucher is another booktuber here, and I haven't watched very many of their videos, but they are friends with lots of other booktubers that I do watch. And this book is perfectly described as Mean Girls meets Bridgerton. And it's about Georgiana, who is sent to live with her aunt and uncle in the Regency era in this country house. And she is bored out of her mind. She is angry at her parents for sending her away until she meets the queen bee of the village, who is about her age, and all of her incredibly rich friends. And Georgiana is drawn into their circle which has interesting consequences, and consequences that she didn't necessarily expect. This book explores a lot of really incredible themes for young adults, but there should also be some trigger warnings attached to those, such as sexual harassment, potential rape, along with quite a lot of drinking and drug use, but I loved the way that it explored those topics, and especially the fact that different people will react to those themes very differently, and that all of those responses are valid responses, which I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Lex was also sure to include a diverse cast of characters and emphasize that this would have been possible in the Regency, all of which are wonderful, wonderful points, and it was very engaging. However, being the Regency nerd that I am, there were a lot of elements that would pull me out of the story that were very anachronistic. They would spend a lot of time writing dialogue that was supposed to feel very Regency, or at least very old, and then they would fall out of that dialogue again. And what the characters were saying was good and important, but the mixed style in which it was delivered pulled me out of the story a lot of the time. But then again, that's just me. I don't know that a young adult audience is necessarily going to be that fussy. Then, for my classic of the month, I read Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. I read The Warden for Victober and really loved it. And this is a direct sequel to The Warden. So we still follow Mr. Harding and Dr. Grantley 
and the bolds and all of those characters that we know and love, along with some new characters who move into the neighborhood. The plot of this one is still as theological and full of high church politics in that the Bishop of Barchester has died and there is then the great debate over who will become bishop and when Dr. Prudy and his wife and his chaplain Mr. Slope move in, that is when things get really fraught and an all-out war starts over who should be in charge and who should hold various church positions, how those services should be run, along with the occasional romances, or pseudo-romances anyway. At times I did feel like the plot dragged because it is so mired in church politics, but luckily I am now at a point in my own church experience where I don't mind that anymore. I'm further removed from that than I was the first time I tried to read this many years ago when I was involved in the search committee for my own church's minister and was increasingly frustrated with that. So I really enjoyed it. Again, Trollope's characterization is wonderful and there were some really funny moments. Plus, I discovered the series is, at least currently, on YouTube starring Alan Rickman as Mr. Slope and Nigel Hawthorne as Dr. Grantly, which is just an incredible cast right there. So I'm really excited to go and watch it now that I have read both The Warden and Barchester Towers. Then I read another ebook, this time borrowed from my library, and that was The Blue Castle by L.M. Montgomery. And this is the story of a young woman who is treated horribly by her family her entire life, and she is now 29, and they have all determined, well, you're going to be a spinster forever, and you're going to serve us for all time. And she decides, you know what? I have had enough. And she goes out to make a life for herself in which she can be happy and in a way create for herself the blue castle that she always retreated to in her imagination when she was a child. This was very sweet. Its ultimate message was lovely. It had some really lovely moments, but overall I didn't love it as much as I loved the Anne series. And I realize they are two completely different books and Ellen Montgomery is allowed to write different sorts of things, but this one didn't quite resonate with me the same way, as much as I hoped that it would, at least. I then read Edward III by William Shakespeare, which I won't say much about here because I did create a whole video about that on my channel recently, which you can check out for my further thoughts. I also read two more ebooks. The first was Bringing Down the Duke, The Wedding Story by Evie Dunmore, which is a 20-page ebook that is available from her website, giving you a little bit more information about what happens between the penultimate chapter of Bringing Down the Duke and the final chapter. And it was really sweet and really lovely, and I really enjoyed revisiting those characters, but given that it was only 20 pages, that's about as much as I can say about it. I then also read Accomplished by Amanda Quain, which is a young adult retelling of Pride and Pe Prejudice through Georgiana Darcy's point of view, set in a prep school in upstate New York. I was really intrigued by this premise, and I really wanted to love it, but it was really clumsily executed. I have a full review on my Goodreads page if you want to read it, but my main complaints were that none of the characters were likable. The way that Quain wrote race got very awkward and very uncomfortable, and indeed the pacing of the book felt very awkward and very strange. I don't think it accomplished, no pun intended, what the premise could have accomplished. So I would not recommend reading that book when it is published this spring. And finally, a book I am reading right now and is very short, so I should be finishing it by the end of the month, 
is A Glove Shop in Vienna by Eva Ibbotson, which is a collection of short stories that all take place in the winter. And they take place in a range of places, but they are all the typical places that Eva Ibbotson will write about, such as England, Vienna, Russia, any time between the late 19th century and the 1940s. And so far I've read one or two stories and they are really beautiful and really lovely, but since they are short stories I can't really give you more details than that. But if you loved Eva Ibbotson's other work for young adults slash adults, you will definitely enjoy these stories. So those were all the books that I read in January. Let me know down below if what your thoughts were on any of these books or if you have further questions for me about any of these and let me know what were some of your favorite reads of this first month of 2022. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone!